Hello everyone, welcome to the online tutorial presented by your own biology nowadays. In this video, I will be giving you a detailed description on Kingdom Protista coming under Vitaka's 5 Kingdom classification. As you already know, Kingdom Protista consists of microscopic unicellular eukaryotes. Being eukaryotes, their cell body contains a true nucleus and other membrane bound cell organs. This kingdom forms a link with the other kingdoms, Kingdom Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia, which consists of multicellular eukaryotes. Members of Kingdom Protista, the protists, are mainly aquatic. They can be found in fresh water as well as in sea water. They reproduce asexually by binary fission and sexually by process involving cell fusion and cyborg formation. Kingdom Protista is divided into five groups. Chrysophytes, dinoflagellates, euglenoids, slime molds, and protozoans. Chrysophytes, dinoflagellates, and euglenoids are the photosynthetic protists, whereas slime molds are the saprophytic protists, and protozoans are the predator or parasitic protists. So let's see the first group under protista, the chrysophytes. The first point is that they are photosynthetic. We can find them in fresh water as well as in marine environment. Chrysophytes include diatoms and golden algae or desmids. About diatoms, they are the most important and chief producers of the oceans. Many living organisms depend on them for food. Diatom cell walls form two thin overlapping shells which fit together like a soap box like this. The top half of the cell wall is called epithica. Epi means top and the bottom half is called hypothica. Hypo means under. There are deposits of silica in the cell wall and because of this the cell walls are indestructible. They cannot be destroyed. When this organism dies the only thing left behind is its cell wall. This accumulation over billions of years had led to large deposits of silica on ocean flows called diatomaceous earth or diatomite or caselgar. As it is abrasive in nature, it is used in polishing. It is also used in filtration of oils and syrups because the diatom cell walls can pick up even the small impurities in these liquids. Now about desmids, another group of organisms under chrysophytes. As all these organisms belong to Kingdom Protista, they are all unicellular. So desmids are also unicellular organisms, but the cell is divided into two symmetrical compartments separated by a narrow bridge. Nucleus is located in this bridge. Each compartment has a large folded chloroplast for photosynthesizing. Coming to the second group of protists, that is dinoflagellates. They are photosynthetic and mostly marine. They appear to be green because of the pigment chlorophyll. They appear to be yellow because of beta-carotene and golden brown because of a group of xanthophyll pigments. Some of them, for example, Nautiluca scintillans, exhibit bioluminescence. In this picture, the glowing blue color of the water is due to the bioluminescence shown by these dinoflagellates. It's really a beautiful sight. There is an opinion that dinoflagellates show bioluminescence to protect them from their predators. The body of dinoflagellates is enclosed in stiff cellulose plates. Cellulose plate of the dinoflagellate gonioloxx is shown in this picture. They have two unequal flagella, longitudinal and transverse. The longitudinal flagellum is directed towards the end of the cell along the longitudinal groove while the transverse flagellum is flat and ribbon-like located in the transverse groove called the girdle. Sometimes red dinoflagellate like gonioloxx undergo rapid multiplication and cause blooms. This will make the sea appear red. This is called red tide. They are harmful because they produce toxins which will kill the animals in sea including fishes. Now let's see the third group under Kingdom Protista the euglenoids. They are mainly photosynthetic. An example for euglenoids is euglena. They don't have a rigid cell wall, instead they have a protein rich layer called pellicle. This makes their body flexible. They have two flagella, a very short one and a very long flagella. 
The long flagellum helps in their movement, while the short flagellum may function as a light receptor. As I explained in the part 1 of this lecture, euglenoids have two modes of nutrition. And what are they? Autotrophic and heterotrophic. Euglena have chlorophyll in their chloroplast and the presence of sunlight they prepare their whole food and act as autotrophic. But in the absence of light, they become heterotrophic by absorbing nutrients from the surroundings. Chlorophyll of euglenoids is found to be a same mass that of higher plants. Okay, now let's move on to the fourth group, slime molds. They are the saprophytic protists, which means that they feed on dead organisms. Under favorable conditions, for example, when there is a lot of food available, they aggregate together and form a multinucleate vegetative body called plasmodium. This will grow and spread over several feet and finally form sporangia bearing spores. Let's see a part of the YouTube video by BBC. Here you can see the time lapse video of pulsating movement and growth of plasmodium. They eat any dead decaying twigs or leaves that come in their way. When the food is all eaten up or if the conditions are unfavorable like when it is drought, some cells of the plasmodium will turn into fruiting bodies called sporangia and some other cells will turn into spores. Spores are found at the tips of sporangia. Spores possess true walls. They are extremely resistant and survive for years even if the conditions are unfavorable for growth. But when the conditions are favorable, the spores germinate into a slime mold and the life cycle continues. Now let's see the last group of protists, protozoans. They are heterotrophs, which means that they depend on other living organisms for food. They live as predators or parasites. They are considered to be the primitive relatives of animals. They are found in both freshwater and marine environments. On the basis of organs of locomotion or movement, protozoans are divided into four groups. Amoeboid protozoans, flagellated protozoans, ciliated protozoans, and sporozoans. Amoeboid protozoans have pseudopodia for movement. Flagellated protozoans move with the help of flagella. Ciliated protozoans have hair-like structures called cilia for movement, whereas sporozoans have no special organs for movement, but still they show a kind of gliding movement. Let's see the first group under protozoans, that is amoeboid protozoans. They are found in fresh water, sea water or in moist soil. They don't have a particular shape. For movement, as well as to capture food, they use pseudopodia, which means false feet. They can extend pseudopodia in any direction and slowly engulf food. This kind of engulfing food particles by a cell is called phagocytosis. Let's see a part of another YouTube video so that we can understand phagocytosis better. Here you can see how an amoeba extends its pseudopodia to catch its prey. Remember that amoeba is a one-celled organism and it's really amazing to watch how it catches its prey. Don't forget to watch the full videos. Check out the links in the description box below. Some of the amoeba protozoans are parasites. For example, in the amoeba histolytica, that cause amoebic dysentery. The second group, flagellated protozoans. They have flagella for movement. They are either free living or parasitic. Parasitic forms cause diseases in humans and other animals. Trypanosoma brucei cause sleeping sickness. The name sleeping sickness is given to that disease because in the affected people, the sleep cycle will be disrupted. In this picture, the flagella of this protozoan can be seen clearly. Coming to ciliated protozoans, they have a characteristic shape. For example, paramecium shown here is slipper shaped. These protozoans are all aquatic. They have thousands of hair-like structures called cilia all over their body and these cilia help in their movement. They have an oral groove that leads into a cavity called gullet. And how do they capture food? The movement of cilia causes the water with food particles to 
enter through the oral pore and reach the gullet. Food is digested in the food vacuum and the waste is thrown out of the body through the anal pore. The last group of protozoans, the sporozoans. They are called sporozoans because they form reproductive cells called spores. They don't have flagella or cilia for movement but they show a gliding movement. They are parasitic as well as pathogenic. For example, Plasmodium vivax, the malarial parasite, caused malaria in humans. So now we saw the members of Kingdom Protista. Okay, I think some of you will be confused a little because I used the term Plasmodium at two different places in this video. One under slime molds and one under sporozoans. So what's the difference between these two Plasmodium? First difference is that the slime mold plasmodium is a multinucleate vegetative structure formed by aggregation of individual slime molds, while sporozoan plasmodium is the name of the malarial parasite and is uninucleate. Now, can you tell me the second difference? Slime mold plasmodium is saprophytic, feeding on decaying twigs and leaves while sporozoan plasmodium is parasitic, causing malaria in humans. I hope that this is all clear now. That's all for this video. In the part 4 of this lecture, we will see kingdom fungi in detail. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.